um, we're talking about the waiting season and then the waiting room, staying here and all of that. And as young people, we will have some questions I would like you to, um, you know, you know, shed some more light on. So I'll just start with this question and, and you know, I'm trusting that you'll help us answer these questions. Um, knowing that the waiting season, you know, and again, as a feedback from the session we just had, um, knowing that the waiting season can be tiring, how can one handle or combat discouragement, despair, depression in the waiting season? So we can start with you, and just quickly take it around. Thank you for the question. <coughs> like we, we had in our session, uh, the waiting period has a different layer. Uh, one of the layers is when you are not engaged to anybody, there's nobody blinking eye to you, and you're not blinking eye to anybody. You are just on your own. The other one is uh, when somebody is beginning to blink eye, and you are waiting for the person to come and propose. You know, that could also be, eh, be demanded. Anytime you see call, you think they are calling you for proposal. And uh, if you have the experience, by the time they call you to committee, and you get the only to call that the brother has not gone for medical test. Mm. You know what they are calling you for, but the person cannot propose. Then the third layer is when you are engaged. And uh, you have to go through a lot. I have defended sisters in our session. And I promise I'm going to expose brothers, all the antics of brothers here. So that you'll be, you'll be careful, you'll be wary and all that. Yes. Then one of the things I told them is what we call transmutation. You change. That is conversion from one state of energy to another. Uh, as human, our testosterone, progesterone, anointing doesn't take it away. Salvation and sanctification does not take it away. It's there. However, you can transmutate. And that is why get involved. Um, you don't want to add to the number of people suffering from depression. It doesn't worth it. I know it's not easy, really, waiting. But do you know what? Little thing impresses little minds. Men, those who really know what they are doing, it is childishness that makes people to crave for toys. Real men or real women, they need tools. If you get depressed, does that solve your problem? If you get depressed, suddenly depression just turns to a man and the man becomes your husband. It doesn't help. That is why you need knowledge. You can profile yourself, your emotional state part time, and you want to find out what is eating you up. So you transmute it. You can pray. You can involve in exercise. You can go for evangelism. Why you are involved, you don't even remember you have emotion because you are running around. Until you come back and you start to have no activity again, the emotion will show face and say, eh, where did you keep me since all this while? What I'm only telling you is this. It will come, but don't open the door. I say, who is that? He say, I am discouragement. You say, I'm sorry, oh. There is no vacancy here, oh. You understand me? And I know other things that could wear us down, your friend, the junior sister of your friend, the junior junior sister of your friend are all getting married. You are not going to the same place. Do you understand me? And get this settled in your mind. No matter how old you are, before you get married, you are expected to live longer when in your marriage. If you are 25 now, you are not expected to die at 50. You are 25. You marry at 25. Before you know it, you live another 25 years as a married woman, as a married man, if you think you suffered, why single? Try and marry wrongly first. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Um, I think that was that was actually a fantastic one. He said discouragement will come, but don't allow it to weigh you down. So like. You can just say, yeah, no way here. Like, you break the bias, no way. All right, so um, the second question, um, we said, um, according to the Bible, we said, if thou faint in the day of adversary, thy strength, is, thy strength is small. So how does one draw strength in the waiting season? 
Okay, importantly, the waiting season is a period of preparation. And if you prepare well, you will end well. You will enjoy that time very well. I talk about something, structural preparation. Spiritual preparation is the first one. Have a stand with God. Have a personal thing with God, not what your parents have or what your friends have. Have direct access to God. Know how to relate with God. That even when things are getting, you're getting discouraged, your younger ones are getting married, things are happening, you are checking the social media, you are seeing 21 year old getting married and having children, and you are like, God, when? Because you can talk to God. God can tell you, my daughter, my son, relax. I am cooking something very delicious for you. I'm sure you are waiting for something delicious. Because really, let me tell you, if you think you are tired now, waiting for somebody to come and marry you, or waiting for a sister to say yes to you, and you are getting tired because age is running out. See, you will be more tired, more than tired, by the time you pick a daughter of Jezebel that has transformed, you know, temporarily to be a child of God. Or you as a sister, you see that one brother can kabash a little. I had one speaking in tongues to some word of knowledge. And you feel that is it. I almost ran into something like that. But God had mercy on me. So if you feel you found somebody and you marry, just wait. So what I am saying is you draw strength from God. That is your source, number one source. Also as humans, you should look up to people who can inspire you. You have mentors, your pastors. Some pastors have youthful hearts. That they have your interests at heart. Move close to them. Get inspiration from them. Then the caucus, the caucus you, 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 you keep. Your friends. Who are they? Are they people who are saying, ah, you are just there, like that drama. You are just there wasting your life. Sister, do something, bro. Please, do something. What matter is she's atten she attends church. She can quote the Bible. Go ahead, pick somebody. No. But if you are in company of people who reason the way the Bible reasons, who has the Bible as their standard, it will help you. So your friends matter a lot. You draw strength from friends who are also correct people. Thank you very much for, thank you for that response. So while we wait, prepare yourself, draw strength from God and from the right people around you. Thank you so much. So sir, we would like to ask this question. We touched on it um, in the female segment, but we'd also like for you to shed more light. Seeing that the waiting season can um, be fraught with temptations, how then does, how then can one handle sexual urges and temptation during the waiting season? Thank you very much. Now, the waiting season is not a very pleasant season, in quotes. It's very easy for somebody to tell you, don't be discouraged, just keep on holding on. The person may not have gone through the experience since you are going through. I remember when I was planning to marry, you know, my own life, I'll give you a practical example so that you can understand. I first got married in 1994, but I lost my wife after many years. My wife got, died in 2017. So I wanted to remarry. And uh, I was led. I went, and, uh, I went to the marriage committee. And of course, the uh, chairman of the marriage committee told me, Pastor, I know what you are passing through. I said, sir, you don't know what I'm passing through. <laughs> Number one, his wife had never died. <laughs> are you with me? Yes, sir. He had never gone through what I've gone through. Taking care of the family alone. My child following me here and there. And a lot of other challenges. And as a pastor of a church, that your wife died, no, no wife. A lot of temptations here and there. I remember a young lady came after my wife died. Because we helped, we assisted her, and she wanted to become very close. And I, I sensed it. She came. And of course, she called me daddy because I'm old enough to be her father. She was 20-something. 
And she said, Daddy, I want us to go to Agbara to go and spend weekend. Uh -uh. I said, weekend, okay. I said, I'm not going to Agbara. And at that time, you know, she felt that this man is vulnerable. Even though people are around, they don't know intrinsically what I was passing through. And many people don't know that even those who are pastors, they have their own temptations. So she came. He said, Daddy, let's go to Agbara that all that we need, you don't need to buy anything. I've bought everything. Ah. Something told me that. <laughs> Wash and pray. Oh. <laughs> so I told her, I'm sorry, Shade, I'm not going to Agbara. I said, did you put something in your mouth? I said it in Yoruba. She said, Daddy, I don't like it. Oh. Now she now called her friend. That her friend is in Dubai now, but she called her friend. She was in Agbara then. And he said, Daddy, over wow. Well. Daddy did not want to come. He said, Daddy, I'll come now. Shade will take care of you. Uh -huh. She will use her hand to rub your back. And eventually, God helped me. I said, No. You know, let me tell you no matter the level you reach in Christendom, you can fall. Are you with me? Anointing does not stop temptation if you, you are not intentional about it. I can speak in tongues. I'm baptized in the Holy Ghost. Does not stop you from falling if you are not intentional about it. Are you with me? And therefore, I said no. I never knew she, it was a trap. After many months, I didn't see her. And I asked her friend, where is this so-and-so? Ah, He said, Daddy, Shade is in Kaduna now. I said, what is she doing in Kaduna? He said, Otiloyo, she's pregnant. I said, what? Do you know the plan? Somebody gave her the pregnancy. And she didn't like that person. And she felt this man is loving, amiable, a child of God. He will take good care of me. Let me I, I give him, dash him the pregnancy. That's why you need to set boundaries for yourself. It's not everybody that comes. Daddy, daddy. Uh, daughter, daughter. And you just move there. You will lose your life. And therefore, the girl, the young lady became pregnant. She hid herself for some time and eventually she had a baby. Today, she's the mother of that baby. Whether she like it or not, she's married. Now, if I have fallen into that temptation, my wife just died and I'm still mourning her, they will have said, her, she's the one that killed the wife. When did the wife die? She has just impregnated another lady. That is why, if you are going, to, if you are waiting, it was my waiting period, but it was not pleasant. It was very painful. But God helped me. And the Lord will help you. Amen. The Bible says there are no temptation that have taken a man. But that is not common to all. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you. Allow you to be tempted above that you are able. But with the temptation, it will make a way for you. That you will be able to bear it. So, and the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 12. Let he that thinketh is standard. Take it lest it fall. Nobody is immune from falling if he's careless. So, in your waiting period, set boundaries for yourself. Just like it was told the brothers there, it's not everybody that comes. I love you, sister, and will hug you. Be very careful of all these uh, different kinds of hugs. Some men have anointing to hug ladies, run away from such people, and they want to tap current from you. Are you with me? So, be very careful. And then be careful of the social media, uh, all the social media. You open this. There are some ladies because they have been waiting, no brother has come. Some men, no sister has come. They will go to different dating sites. And they will be looking for those men who are available. Some, they have some programs on radio or television where they match make people. Be very careful. There are temptations that will come to you. Stay by the word of God. Depend upon the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Don't run ahead of God. Everybody has his or her own time zones. You have your own time zone. The sister there has a time zone. The brother there has his time zone. Yoruba people will say, Ma wa gua la go shishe. Don't look at another person's time. God has a time zone for you. Wait patiently for him. He will bring the desires of your heart to pass. That man that you will marry, that will make your life beautiful, God will give to you. That woman that God has prepared for you that will make your life beautiful, God will give to you. 
Wait patiently for it. As you wait, trust in the Lord, running away from sin. Don't compromise. Stay by the word of God. Depend upon the Lord. Look upon to him. The Bible says that God knows the thought that they think towards you. The thought of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Very soon, your bell will ring. Amen. And very soon, we will hear about you. And you will send us your invitation card. We will come and celebrate you. Amen. And you will not marry your enemy. Amen. You will marry your friend. Amen. Thank you very much, sir. That was elaborative. And I think key point stood for me was set boundaries for yourself. Stay by the word of God. Don't run ahead of God. Um, also, we have to be intentional about temptation. Anointing doesn't stem temptation if you are not intentional about it. So now, um, I think we'll go to take questions from the audience. So if you have questions, you can um, just um, pass to us. We can give you the mic if you want to talk. If you're shy, it's fine, just like me. You can um, write it down and then we'll take your questions. Do we have anybody that has... Please, could you step forward? Anyone with a question? Okay, so I'm first shy. I can come to you. Do you have anyone? Can you raise your hand? Can we see? Or if, you, if, you, if you've written it down, you can also give it to the ushers. So, Esther. You have a question. Also. Do we have anyone with a question yet? Oh, yeah, still bringing it out of the pocket. Okay, okay so I think while we wait, yeah. um, so just take the okay. other question. So we're still waiting for your question. You can raise up and I can come and meet you and then I'll get the question from you. Or you can just pass to any of the ushers. I'll come get the questions from you. Okay. Um, so while we wait for the next question, um, I'll just ask this. So as you explained, Helia, sir, um, for, you said there are different um, waiting seasons for those who are, they don't even have anyone yet, those who are, you know, waiting for the committee and all of that. So my question is, okay, waiting is defined um, by dictionary.com as a specified delay required by law between an intention and acting on it. So during this waiting season, can you elaborate to us on the steps of how the marriage committee works. Some people are probably just waiting and they're not even sure how does this work and you know they're just frustrated. So could you explain to us, sir? Uh, well, this is uh, the Palai Bible Church and uh, we, have, uh, we have structures in place. And uh, I can tell you for free, if you don't know today, go and know. Uh, the people in that committee, it's not because they are paying them one naira. They think that they are doing well and they can help us and guide us as children. Um, them, so at times we go to them, we throw tantrum, we talk and whatever. Maybe because of what, the way we are feeling or because of our assumption. Okay, take for example, is this I've been invited? Somebody spoke to me. Um, this week, he said, see, daddy, my district pastor gave me two letters that they need me at the committee, but I will not go. Now, the brothers who took the sister's name to the committee, if they are not careful, they will go and be fighting people in the committee for wasting their time. Meanwhile, the sister, you brought her, her name, has not responded to the call of the committee. So when you are led, I know it's becoming more challenging these days because of uh, our level of expression, the level of exposure we have as young people and a lot of, where this generation is suffering from information overload. You see people, how can some people be telling you when to propose, how good to propose to? Uh, all this one at this time and age, don't I know what is good for me? You are right. However, you know, those uh, bumps, let me use the word bumps now, or a sort of uh, break speed uh, something, is meant to help us. The brother is, of course, and funny enough, is that if sister are led, committee will accept you and say, I have prayed through, it is. Brother Jonah. But 
I can tell you 90% of us sitting down here will not go to committee and say, ah, how will they hear that I'm the one bringing brother's name? By the way, what precludes you from taking brother's name to committee? Now, you don't want to. Brother, you know you are talking about he's trying to make ends meet. He's running up and down. They are calling first time, second time, third time. Brother, you not go and pray. He said, Pastor, I cannot pray now. Look at where I'm living. And some of us, I think another challenge we have is that we seem not to have mentor or pastor we can talk to one-on-one. -on -one. I can tell you there are certain things that will never be said on the pulpit. But when you have pastors, women leader who can read really of help, they will tell you some information. The church is not a cult. So when you take the name there, they ask you to go and do test. After doing the test, they send for the sister. Now, the onus is on the sister to respond or not to respond. They will not go and take the sister at home by force. You know, one of the most challenging things in life is to see the person you are falling in love with falling in love with somebody else. <laughs> it's a reality. Do you know that? Now, you have your expectations. You felt led to brother Boaz. Now brother Jonah is coming. Say, sorry, I know it's brother Jonah. I had an inkling. I beg, I'm not going. Now, the brother Boaz you are waiting for is also looking at sister Penina. <laughs> Can you see the complication? The committee is there. They are not to match with. They are to guide you. But it is what is presented to the table the committee we work with. And let me tell you this. Each time I think about it, I'm grateful to God. I've seen people talk about committee anyhow and talk about leadership. I don't have that experience. I know some of the things they are saying may be true. In my life, in this church, I wonder, maybe God just favored me. I work with great leaders. Who were my, there were questions they never asked me in committee. They have trusted my judgment to that point. As a campus student, I was a campus leader. In fact, I went there when my wife was in 400 level. I tell you, when you are serious with God, pastors are not wicked. And the kind of liberty I had enjoyed as a young man under leaders to the point of committee, my father, my parents are not in the church. So it's not favoritism. I've only shown that I am serious over time and I'm obedient, loyal to the Bible and following leadership. So when I got there, we were just playing. What about this? What about this? What did you bring this one and that one? And we spoke. We laughed. Okay, go and do your test. I went to do my test. I brought it back. The issue of uh, stressing me, it never happened to me. So when you are serious, I tell you it will open a lot of doors to you. But this generation, where either we meet on social media, I'm not saying that is not a possibility. We sit down, we match make ourselves already before we go to committee, because we know what is good. But I can tell you, when they prevent or slow us down a little, do you know the slowdown may be a miracle? For you to discover some hidden things about the person. Somebody was SS and told the sister, he's AA. A brother. They asked him, he said he had discussed with the sister, only for the sister, they tabled the matter, and they said, ah. and the sister was like, sorry. I thought you said the committee, the committee are also looking at the brother. I thought you said you are discussing with the sister. So they are there to help us. God bless you. Okay, sir. Um, so just again, for some people who may be wondering that what are they supposed to do? Like, what are the steps? Could you just, you, you want it? You okay. Want to, okay. okay. Yes, All right. Yes, thank you. Praise the Lord. You know me, I'm a man that I've gone through a lot of, <laughs> I've gone through bumps of life. And it's better you ask people who have gone through a particular road. And they have experience. Somebody who has not traveled a particular road, if you ask that person, this road, how does it look like? They say, hey, it's like, it's very good. When you go there, you will move here, you move there. The person has not gone through it. But a man who has traveled times and times over, he will tell you, if you move a mile, there is a bump. If you move another mile, there is a gulp. Be very careful. Now, let me tell you this. The marriage committee... It's not there to maltreat you, to witch hunt you, or to match make you. But, you know, young people, they have different perceptions of the committee because of the stories 
they have had. We cannot overrule the fact that one or two out of the married committees may not be doing well. We need to pray for them. But in actual fact, the church has placed the leaders there in the married committee to help you. Now, if you are led to a brother or a sister is led, I mean, if a sister is led to a brother, somebody says, eh? I'm led to a brother. Is the brother should, that should be led to me? No. It's not always like that. You know, I told you that I've had two marriages. One in 2000, I mean, one in 1994. And my wife died in 2017. I waited for three years and I remarried in 2020. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Now, in the first marriage, I was the one that went to the marriage committee. For the sister. The second marriage, amazingly. <laughs> praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It was the sister that took my name to the marriage committee. Let me tell you this. When I was praying, I felt led to a particular sister. She happened to be a widow. Uh, and uh, the sister had only one daughter. When the marriage committee called her, she ran away. And she felt that maybe she did it. She has not gone through a depression or whatever she has been. You know, it's difficult for women to want to remarry after the husband has died. And I don't know why, but it's not easy because I understand the reason. But when I went, the committee called her. She ran away. And after months, she didn't show up. I have to go back to the drawing board. I prayed. And the person I am now married to, we met, you know, I'm a trainer, I do training here and there. She was one of the people that attended the training. In fact, she said there, when I was doing the training, the Lord was, she's a member of the church. The Lord was ministering to her, that is your husband. And the sister married, the day we married, that was the day she clocked 44. She has never married. Are you with me? And that tells you that no matter your age, there is somebody God has reserved for you. And she said, this person that is talking, this one, ah, this one will have been married. And eventually, I was asked to come and consult for a particular school. And we wanted to employ a head teacher. Incidentally, again, she was one of the people that applied here. Can you see the way God works? We did the exam. She came first. I never knew her from Adam. But I said to the owner of that school that this person is diminutive. She's of a small stature. But the woman said, what does that matter? That she is the best among the, the, the pack. Mm. And we are looking for Montessori. She had the experience We took her. And she happened to be from Ikorodu. And they now said, she wants to stay, come to Surulere. We have to get accommodation for her. And then I said, you are the pastor in their church. Help her to look for accommodation. I said, which accommodation? I never knew it was divine arrangement. Am I talking to somebody? Eventually, I got her the accommodation. I left. To cut a long story short. It was God helping her. Because I never knew all those things was going. Eventually, I said, I wanted to marry somebody in Germany. I wanted to marry somebody from Germany. That person, they didn't work. God did not allow it to work. I just told the married committee chairman, I said, please, let's put on hold. Let me just enjoy my Christian life and keep on praying, keep on pastoring and preaching the gospel. I never knew God has settled my case. Are you with me? Amen. So, when this sister now shattered me, I blocked her. I'm telling you the truth. I blocked her because I said, what is this one looking for? I blocked her, and I said, I don't even know her. But the Lord was telling me that the person I wanted to marry is just ordinary container. Hmm. I'm telling you the truth. That this person you are running away from, that's the content. That was the expression the Lord gave to me. That this one you wanted to marry is ordinary container. That the one you are running away from is the content. So I unblocked her. Amen. And we started, she asked me about this, about that. I said, okay. But I never gave her a chance. Until And I told the married committee chairman that this is a person that I feel that the Lord is bringing to my mind, but I want to give it time 
to pray. I said, no problem, pastor, anytime you are ready, just come. One day, I was just at the Bible salon. The chairman called me, pastor, come. That sister has come. I said, which sister? <laughs> Is that the sister you told me about? Wow. And to cut a long story short, we came, she came, she saw, she and conquered. she conquered. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, to round it off, as a sister or a brother, when you are led to a brother or a sister, go, go to your best friend. Go to your pastor. You have a pastor. Because the best friend you, tell, you are telling, you don't know whether the person is also having a crush for that person. We have stories where a brother will tell a sister, I mean tell his friend about a sister, and the brother will say, bro, don't go yet. Just keep on praying. We'll be praying together. The next announcement after some months is that the following members of the church have prayed, and they have known the will of God in marriage. They have also sought their parents' consent to be married in this church. If any person or persons have any reason or reasons why they should be joined together, they should not be joined together and only wedlock in this church. Such objection or objections should be made known to the church before it is too late. And the intended couple should get in touch with the married committee. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So when you are led, go to your pastor. Your pastor will direct you to the married committee. And from there, the married committee will take it up. And they will guide you step by step through the period of courtship, through the period of filing uh, in the registry, the period of uh, a, a traditional marriage, paying of dowry to the church wedding. And then you go back and enjoy yourself as husband <laughs> and wife. Wow. Simple as A, B, C. <laughs> Can we put our hands together? Wow. Oh, so that was so detailed. Thank you so much for the answer and also for sharing um, practical examples. Thank you so much. We have a question from the audience. If you have more questions, kindly send them forward so we can ask our panelists. So we'll ask this to you, Ma. Um, what do I do when those coming for me are from different denominations and are not sound Christians, but God has specifically told me that my husband is in deeper life? So this person thinks God has told them that their husband is here, but other people are coming from outside. Stay on the call and your conviction. Stay on your conviction. Yes, there is nothing um, wrong if you find a husband or a wife in another Bible-believing church who is genuinely born again. All the Bible tells us is, do not marry a backslider, an unbeliever, or an unserious Christian. You are looking for where it is in the Bible, right? An mm. unbeliever has different segments also. All right? So please, an unbeliever, an unserious Christian, somebody who is not serious with Christ, who has not taken Christ personally, who is fluctuating, you shouldn't marry. Then a total backslider, somebody you are sure, you can see the signal that this one has gone. You can't marry those categories of people. So for you who ask this question particularly, you are sure of what God told you. Please stay on that, on that message. Because if you do otherwise, simply because you have plethora of, of, of guys coming, and those guys may be tempted sometimes. Some of them, they are packaging alone. They are standing six feet tall, teddy sets, pink, pink lips. Like I was telling the sister, some brothers, you will see them, they wear their senator like this. Everything will be like tantalizing. The gators will stand. The shoes, you will you'll be wondering, is this one walking on the air? And the tempta temptation is there, really. And sometimes, some sisters, you can just do a Google search, and you discover that that person has a very fat profile. And you're like, ha, I'll be deeper life safe. It's taking time. And that's your waiting period, though. So for you, you already have your message. You are different from people who did not have any message. So stay on your conviction and wait for God to fulfill that word he has given you. But for other people, wait on God. Do what God wants you to do, wherever the person is coming from. But please, be very careful. There's a case we are handling. It happened like three weeks ago or more. The lady was in the church with us in another region, another state. She was fervent, fervent in the faith. And suddenly she said she got a brother from Four Square. Four Square is a good church, by the way. It's a Bible-believing church, right? 
We are happy. She didn't say she saw uh, why, uh, husband at synagogue or something, any controversial church. And we are like, okay, have you prayed? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. You can't, it's not your being sure now. It's not your own conviction. It's her own. So everybody supported her. She got married. In fact, the guy pampered her during their courtship. Like, she, the guy made life easy for her. And she was like, oh God, I thank you. You have finally remembered me. Unlike some of you that you'll be asking God, when, when, when? <laughs> Triple question mark. Our God came in her own, you know, by her own expression. And, you know, everything went on. They did the wedding. They had a child, the child called three, I think in December last year. But nobody knew that that guy, I don't know what happened, though, maybe spiritually or physically, he just changed overnight and was beating her. By the way, I'm a human rights activist. I campaign against domestic, against um, violence, gender violence, 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 women. She wasn't even talking to anybody. All the sister noticed was she was working harder than before to make ends meet because the girl was not even feeding her. So she was doubling up. She was just under pressure. Caught the long story short, the man beat her to death. No, it happened just behind us here. And some of you saw it on social media. A fine looking young lady. The man beat her to death. She came from our church to another church. I am not saying you can't find good men in other churches. I am just saying be sure. Because in this our deeper life too. In this our deeper life too. 2019 before COVID. I won't mention the sister's name but it happened. It happened in Okoko. Yeah. They married him when, they, when they did, the sister was in medical school. And the guy had graduated in deeper life. They saw the will of God. After two years of marriage, the man switched to synagogue. But the lady refused to follow her. I mean, follow him. So they told him in the church that, oh, it's your wife that is behind your situation. She's, she's a, a mommy water or something. And then the anger aroused. The guy began to beat the lady. Sometimes she, he will beat her and then the neighbors will come around, you know, intervene, um, give her clothes to cover herself and all that. Eventually, she died in May 2019 and she was buried without a child. I am saying this so that you will not say, oh, some people are straight jacketing you that it must be like this. It must be like this. Have something with, to do with God personally so that that thing God tells you, you will stay there and do it. That even if there are Issues, you can say, God, you said I should follow this path. Oh. I'm beginning to experience some, and it will come through for you. But if you do arrange it, you do arrange it, you are on your, on your own. Like God will just fold hand and be looking at you. How many of you want God to fold hand and just be looking at you, steering the ship of your life alone? You can't do it. So follow the, the call. Stay on that conviction and wait for the right person. Thank you very much. Um, major takeaway is make sure you have a personal relationship with God. Make sure that you are sure of what you are hearing from God. The pastor will not hear from you. You have to hear from God yourself. Because at the end of the day, it is still, even if whatever the pastor says, it's still your marriage, it's still our marriage. Um, so, so I'll be directing this next question to you. Um, during the course of waiting, should conversation around sexual um, compartments, sexual... Um, relationship, social capability, should it be discussed? If yes, why? And if no, why, sir? Praise the Lord. <laughs> From that question, it is assumed that uh, the brothers has, and the sisters, they are engaged. From that question. Because somebody you are not engaged to, you don't have business discussing sexual compatibility. From the answer our mommy gave, I want to beg you, ask all the necessary questions. For what I do to my own uh, people and clients now, the first stage is to run you through a profiling session. I told them in the broader stage that I will expose them to you. Be sure the man is psychologically okay. I'm coming to the issue of sex. You cannot afford to marry somebody who suffers from inferiority complex. Eh? You will be shooting down your plane. Uh, there are cases, unfortunately, it happens in the church. Uh, I wouldn't know where people got that mentality. There's nothing that says you cannot be richer than your husband. There's nothing like that. 
please. And number two, when you don't have a say in your marriage, you didn't marry your husband, you marry your boss. Did you hear that? So don't marry your boss. Now, we cannot but talk about sex. However, my encouragement to would-be couple is that um, for such conversation, you probably have it on, on phone. Listen to me. Kinama Noromokwausa. Yes. I told the brothers, no matter your anointing, no matter the grace, God who created you a spiritual being, created you a social being, also created you a sexual being. Genesis 128 says, be fruitful and multiply. That will only be possible through the instrumentality of sexual intercourse. So sex is a gift. Not even in this time and age that everything is open on social media. We need to talk about it. However, you talk on phone, you want to find that you are an introvert, the person is an extrovert, and for a Take, for example, now, a third party coming in, like uh, doing a counseling session, what to let the sister know what to experience, brother, what to experience. And uh, we also tell sister, because the reason why you need to get ready for this is this. The emotional surge will not go until after some time, after my, it will not go completely. So the brother is going to really unleash his power. The brother you think is gentle, marrying you, you know he's not gentle. When it comes to sex, brothers are not gentle. So you have to discuss it. And in relation with the job you do, your health condition, you have to discuss it, both of you. You don't want to get to the exam and begin to prepare. The conversation is actually not meant for the third party. You except you are going through a professional counseling session. Both of you, in fact, there are many things brother and sister discuss. It's not meant for the hearing of the third party. It's not because you are committing sin. It's only between the two of you. You have to discuss it. However, I will advocate you discuss on the phone. Then, if you are the type is affecting you so much emotionally, you can discuss with the man or you can discuss with the sister. But you should not discuss it. For me, it's a no-no. You have to discuss it. You know what you are going into. And that's why a lot of books will be recommended towards the time of your marriage. The reason is this. There have been cases people get to marry, they don't even know what to do. I know a big pastor, he told me, I think a day after my marriage, he said after he got wedded, he went to the hospital. When he got to his turn, he went in to see the doctor. If the doctor say anything, yeah, you can say, Pastor, uh, doctor, I'm not sick. I just married yesterday. I don't know what to do. The man just looked at you and said, are you from deeper life? <laughs> this is a man that married maybe over 25 years ago. It was so, our conservative nature, yes, great. There, it will shock you. Some of you, you are here. You are sisters. You are going to be wedded next Saturday. Your mom will not discuss sex with you. It doesn't help you. They only tell you when you get pregnant. Sorry, are you going to be pregnancy on the tree? <laughs> discuss it. Sincerely speaking, not even your generation that you are very expressive. Discuss it as a marriage relationship counselor. I have a client who will be wedded Wednesday, Thursday. In fact, most of the other thing I took them through took just one, one session. Sex took about three sessions. And I needed to hear from, get the feedback from them and they were like, ah, pastor, in fact, they are not members of Deeper Life. They attend a very beautiful holiness church too. That what they would not even discuss with them in church. For me, we'll be playing the ostrich. If your wedding remains one week and you don't even know you're part of your body as a lady. The husband doesn't know. You people, you will still find out you have to go and figure it out when you get there. Only that there will be a lot of suffering. There are things I don't want to say here. So, discuss it. All right. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> Please, let's just clap for you. All right, he has said it. And that is it. However, you have to be very, very conscious. Apply self-control when you are discussing this issue. 
some of you, you don't want to do anything immoral. But because your discussion has gone to that level, and the main purpose of bringing up that discussion has been deviated, you have deviated from it, you turn to something else, and you begin to have sex on the phone. After that talk, sister, check yourself what happened. You are wet. You had a purpose for bringing up that discussion in the first place. Good motive. At the end of the day, you messed it up. Brother, how far? After discussing one, two sentences, arise, oh, copper shots. Be careful. You have to apply self control when you are doing all this kind of discussion. All right? There are some things you need to know by yourself and apply it where you marry. He mentioned about reading books. Please read books. Every woman is a book every woman who is intending to marry should have. Buy it. Study it. Why study it? Know about the anatomy of your body. How your body works. Your ovulation. Things that are necessary for conception. This and that. ABC of marriage. Answer for your marriage. Ladies in waiting. All those books. We build you. We help you. We prepare you. May God help you in Jesus' Amen. name. That while you are on this journey, you will not defile yourself. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you um, for that, for the answers. Thank you, sir, and thank you, ma. Um, so, I don't know if you have more questions from the audience, but I have a question here. Do we have anyone who wants to ask a question? Okay, so if you want to send it over, you can just send it through the ushers. I'll just quickly read this question I have here. Okay, so this person says, the waiting period differs. What do we do when her parents are not in support of the relationship because of tribal differences? So, sir, would you like to take that? Well, you know that marriage, for you to marry, you have to buy over your parents to understand that this conviction is not of man is of God don't bypass your parents if your parents have not agreed to the person you feel led to maybe you are a Yoruba lady and the man happened to be from another tribe don't say whether they accept it or not I will go and look for a, a mother or a father somewhere and I will go to the registry don't run out. Do you know at times God may use your parents to interject something that you may not know there's a problem somewhere. I'm not saying that it is a sin for you to marry from another tribe. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that at times when your parents say, I don't agree. Don't be too uh, straight jacket to say, no, if you don't agree, we we'll go ahead. Ask them question. Mommy, why are you objected to this? Why are you objecting to this? They will give you their own reason. You will pray. And by the time you pray, time is a healer of all wounds. God will bring solution to it. And you will discover that your parents, after much consideration, and they still discover that you are still insisting that this is the person God has led me to. They will allow you. But if you say, I want to go ahead, and whether you like it or you elope with the woman, or you run away with the man, it will have grave consequences in the future. So when you are led, either to a brother or to a sister from another tribe, like the person I married now, she's from Isoko in Delta State. I'm an Abe Okuta man, a pure Egba man. I'm from Abe Okuta in Oku State. And we are not from the same place, but of course, <laughs> I don't know in my own side, because of my, nobody objected. Nobody objected on our own side too. But in case there's any objection, we have leaders in the church. You can go to them. And if your parents are members of the church, it makes it very easy. If they are not members of the church, you will allow the leaders to also intervene. They will pray. And your parents also will understand why and why it should not be. Or why it should be. And the Lord will guide you. So please don't run ahead of your parents. Whether they like it or not. I'm an adult. I will elope. For example, in deeper life, if your parents don't consent... You know that the leadership of the church will not join the man and the woman together. I hope you know that. If, you, if the answer is yes, say it very loud. Yes. yes. So don't run ahead. Stay patiently. It is still part of the test to know whether this thing is of God 
or not of God. If you are sure that this brother, even though the brother is an Awusa man, I mean, I mean, I'm an Igbo lady, and this person is the person God is leading me to. I've heard of brothers who have to wait for two years because of that. I've heard of sisters that I know who have to wait for a year or more because of that, and eventually they still marry. But if you say, I will run ahead, I will go and marry in the at the registry, you will spoil it. And then the purpose or the, uh, it's, it may be a test. And if you fail that test, it will affect your marriage. Don't ruin your marriage. Be patient. Allow the leadership to wait in. If you are very close to your parent and you are beloved of your parent, they don't want to do anything that will cause you pain or sorrow. They want the best from you or for you. See them, explain to them, and I believe with time, they will consent to it if truly it's of God. And you will have a beautiful marriage. We have cases here in the church where somebody is from the north, you marry somebody from the south, somebody from uh, Yoruba land, you marry an Igbo man, and they have beautiful marriages. I know my beloved brother here, Pastor Toby, I'm sure your wife is a Yoruba woman. Are you a Yoruba man? But are you enjoying the marriage? Wonderful. So please, stay where God wants. If best sin is of God, it will surely come to pass. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I have one more question that was sent in um, before we wrap up. Um, so I'll just um, put it together. Okay. So as you answered to the initial question about um, people who discuss sexual compatibility in, in their marriages, so I'll just um, um, ask you this question, sir. So for such people and that have such conversations and then probably least two more like she was saying that we have to strike a balance. Can you say, will, you, will they say it's a sin? And for those who feel sexual urges for their partner, is it a sin to... Um, Hello. Hi. Hmm. But it's good we are we are bringing these things out. I told the brothers that at times we fight needless battles. If you don't have urge for the person you want to marry, go back and pray. I'm not sure God led you. You understand me? I said needless battle because some of us, instead of asking questions to obtain clarity. We go on fasting spree. No fasting will kill you. No prayer will kill you. Emotion is a, is a sort of data. However, ability to name it will help you to tame it. You have emotion. There's nothing we can do about it. If the person you are, that's why I told them at the brothers this thing, before you fall in love with anybody, you will have crushed on that person. So if anybody tells you you are crushing, you are sinning, tell them you are not sinning. Because you are not an angel. That attraction will come. You see, ah, I, and we are not going to be led the same way. Some people even will open. Some people, they saw dreams. Some people, it is affection. So what do you do if God leads you through affection? You go back and be fasting and praying. That God should keep the affection. And I told them in the brothers this thing. One of the biggest mistakes you can make to the person God led you to, if you see yourself having affection, go and fast. After the fasting, the surge will come in a double wave. You will think something happened. <laughs> so, we cannot but, like a mommy has said, I mention of call, not even video call. I don't, as you see me, I will not, if you are not married, I don't, recommend video call. That's my opinion. You may not buy into it. Men, what we see affects us more. Hmm. Please, I beg you. You don't want to set brother on fire. Talk. Even your voice alone. And that's why in the well, your generation may not know extra cool. Some people will not do VG, but they can do extra cool from 12 midnight to 5 a.m. 
And they will not be that. Have you heard that Buhari just came back? It's not Buhari, it is the voice. <laughs> what concerns you? What's your business with Buhari? But you shall want to be hearing. You finish your credit. He said, don't worry. My credit finish. I, I will load now. I will call again. Men can do anything for love. Jacob served 14 years. In fact, I wrote it down. When Laban told him, for, he said, the Bible says, seven years was like few days. That is how strong love can be. You understand? But the affection will be there. But when we are now uh, doing video calls, and these are the days we even go to Italy together. You know some people, they are fighting. You see pre-wedding picture. I stand to be corrected. Anybody, you hug that lady, you are carrying yourself, you are a backslider. Quote me anywhere. I see people arguing on social media. After all, they are going to court. My friend, you don't understand many things. In less than two weeks after marriage, you will discover how foolish your decisions were. You'll be fed up. Sister, they will open your clothes. You will shout and say, don't bring that tonight. Sex. Oh, uh, you, You'll be fed up within two weeks. I swear. In fact, you almost feel like running out of the house. So what's so special there? And we see pictures. We go to a beach. We carry each other. And then you keep wondering, are these the children we raise in the church? See, as Libra as I can be, some things stand against this Bible. And if we don't tell you straight, we will not be helping you. I know some of you don't like it. You feel, oh, they cage me. Oh, this is deeper life. They want me to do this. Uh, why this? Why that? Uh, Ask those who are married. You can be in the house with your wife for two, three weeks without sex. You just be looking at each other because you are thinking of something more important. Sorry, if you don't even bring money home, the wife will tell you, Daddy, I'm going to buy you one. agree. Am I buying? Eh? Don't bring that, my friend. Go out. Go and bring money. Sex. Oh, my junior. So, we are coming. And I'm good. See, all this is how you are seeing. Sisters are not gentle. Hey, hey, hey. Sorry, ma. Ah, okay. Mommy is saying you are gentle. Listen to me. When it gets to that point, for me as a counselor, what I tell, I will tell the lady, I say, listen, you are married now, you are going home. Don't let me hear that they are pursuing you around the house because I know them. Fear, your heart will cut. After leaving the church, people are dancing, they are eating. You are thinking, how will it be? Ah, today, and everybody is going back now. Even best lady, best man, they are going back. So they will not leave me and this man alone. That is the will of God. Reality show, she have a better in here. So, in the, it is good. Sex is a gift. It's meant for our enjoyment, for pleasure. But, in, of course, in marriage. But, however, don't run ahead. I tell you, some people run into masturbation. Because of some of these things you are doing. And I've seen a lot of us copy what goes on in the world. Three things. Number one, insincerity. That is Jonah 2 8. Number two, impatience. First Samuel chapter 13. So Samuel told Saul, You have done foolishly. Now will God have established your kingdom? Number three, incorrigibility. Second Chronicle 25, Amaziah. This prophet told him, Why are you worshiping? He says, My friend Phobia, who made you to be counselor of the king? The prophet looked and says, It's because God has meant to destroy you. Little thing impresses little mind. Listen to me. I need to say this to you. If you're even in marriage, after sexual intercourse, in less than five minutes, you look back. Does it work going to hell because of this? It's because you don't, you are not in that state now. That's why the thing is shocking you. Let me tell you, all this electric shot, love diminishing return will set in. You look back and you don't want to be ashamed for some of the things you are doing. And at times I look at some of us, what can we do? You have made up your mind what you want to do, where you want to go. Pre-wedding picture, you are preoccupied with pre-wedding picture. As if they are using that one to collect visa. 
And if somebody tells you not to do pre-wedding picture, you take to social media, they want to ruin my idea of joy. Sorry. Which day? You that you see have long life to live in that marriage, you don't even know when you unpack the box, you don't know what you will meet there. The Lord will help us. Amen. Wow. Thank you so much, sirs. Thank you, Ma. Have we gained value? Have you learned anything? Yeah. We're okay, okay, great. So I'll just take, we have one more question, even though we're pressed for time. I'll take this. Um, okay, so this is, does a brother need to sponsor a sister financially before courtship or marriage, even if God is leading the brother to get married to the sister? Does a brother need to sponsor yeah. a sister financially before marriage? Yes, before courtship or marriage. Okay. Now you have said it before courtship or marriage. You are not yet married. Are you with me? They are not talking though. Yeah. I said, you know me, when I talk, I need response. I said, are you with me? Yes, now, this is a Bible believing church. And you know, we want to maintain sexual purity. Now, I ask you a question. Before you obtain, can, can you get or enjoy the benefit of a certificate before sitting for the exam? Did you hear what I said? Can you enjoy a certificate before sitting for the exam? No. no. Are you the father or the mother of that woman? Answer me now. <laughs> Brothers, are you the father or the mother of that sister? Let me tell you something. If you don't want to set yourself on a on a journey of no return. Don't do that. We have had cases where courtship will break. And the sister, the brother will now say, you didn't marry me again. I sponsor you to school. When you got to the school, you now saw a brother there. And uh, you said, you are no more marrying me. Okay, go and return all the things I've given to you. That's why I remember that time. The marriage committee in 1993, when we were in courtship, they asked me a question. They said, during the course, have you been giving gifts to the sister? I said, I bought a sad scripture <laughs> booklet for her. And I remember <laughs> the chairman that time, uh, Professor Oyekule, is now retired. He said, why did you buy sad scripture booklet for her? Has, it not been, has she not been reading, reading sad scripture before marriage? And I asked her a question. I said, sir, is it a sin to buy sad scripture booklet for her? Actually, it's not a sin. But the church is just helping you to set boundaries so that that will not be an attachment that will bring you too much closeness. Because somebody that you are sponsoring our education, you are buying gifts for her. You know, it will go beyond that level. Before you know it, another thing will get there. You may even have premarital sex. That is why it is very, very uh, important that you set boundaries. If you are going to look at it, theoretically, there is no sin in it. Let's be frank. Are you with me? Yes, there is no sin to assist. If the sister says, I'm going to school, and uh, there is, uh, I've not, uh, I don't have this, I don't have that. You can assist, but with a proviso. If it begins to be consistently, uh, to be consistent, so to speak, uh, you give her money as if you are married. Uh, bro, I don't have pocket money. Okay, give me your account number. You send 10,000. Another time, 10,000. Another time, 20,000. Then you are setting yourself up. Because number one, you are not yet married. And apart from the leadership of the church knowing, in your art of art, you know that that privilege is only reserved for somebody who is married. Are you with me? And therefore, so that you don't do things that will set you up, or that will make your emotions to become uh, unnecessarily going a wire. Remember, brothers are moved by what they see. Sisters are moved by what they hear. That's why brothers be very careful. When you begin to tell a sister, I love you. You are just too beautiful. In fact, you are the only sugar in my tea. You are the only cockroach in my cupboard. If I don't see you, I cannot sleep. That is why you need to set boundaries. The moment you begin to give her money, sponsor her education, 
you will begin to speak things. Oh, my dear, well done. You know, I know you are going to be a beautiful wife. And uh, you are speaking a lot of grammar. And that sister begins to, and the sister begins to tell the, the brother, the mother, this is the person that gave me money. And before you know it, the brother will be coming to visit you on the campus. He will pay the pipe, uh, pipe, pipe, pipe. He takes the tune. So if you, the brother will come to the campus and he will just have come to visit you. Before you know it, it will lead to sin. I remember a brother, those years I was uh, a youth leader in the late 80s and early 90s. This brother, he was in my district then at Mushi. And a sister, she was led to a sister. And both of them were too close for comfort. And the church said, if you are led, don't be too close. He said, no, we are, we are led. And the brother told me, your youth leaders, we see them buying suya in the night. And they are eating suya from the same paper. We call the person, what is wrong in it? Before you know it, they started a company together. Why they are not yet married? And they had a joint business, a line loan company. And they were doing it together. We never knew that in that process of intimacy, you know, an affair starts from the heart. Somebody you are too close with, you see the person almost every time. Before you know it, chemistry will begin to work together. They went into premarital sex. They covered it up. Eventually, when the church discovered that they were too, comfort, I mean, too close for comfort, and they did not stop, the church said they cannot join them together. And they went to Ife to do the wedding. The brother happened to be an Igbo brother, the sister, a Yoruba sister. Eventually, they married, and uh, we didn't go there because we told them they should stop, and later we started hearing stories that they have slept together before marriage. And before you know it, the sister, that, you know, before they married, they were, ah, they were all, all neck together, they would go everywhere together, the, the brother would sponsor the sister while she was in school, and all that, and all that. We now later heard that the sister could not cook very well, and all the I love you, I love you, faded away. And the brother will beat the sister. The elder uh, sister and the elder brother of the uh, brother will beat the uh, sister. And eventually, they had two kids. They separated. And later, the husband married before the sister even died. The sister is late now. Now, what am I trying to tell you? Keep yourself. If you don't sponsor her education, she will not die. She will still go to school. Yes or yes? Don't put yourself on a disadvantaged position. Stay where you are. Because not all courtship will lead to marriage. Yes. Am I right? Yes. So, don't create a problem. Because we have cases that some brother will say, sister, you cannot be joined together with that woman, Manu, because you still have 500,000 investment you need to return. I've spent a lot of money on you. If a man spends 500 naira on a sister, and eventually they did not marry, that becomes a problem. So when they begin to make announcement, if any brother or sister, or sister have any reason, why they should not be judged, the brother will raise up his hand. They say, why? He said, when she were in courtship, she was owing me 500,000. I say, what? Say, why? And I paid this, I paid this, and it becomes an issue. So please, don't let your man, the person you now want to marry, be paid the debt he didn't owe. Well, May the Lord help you. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. So I think we have a question from the online on there. Um, so I think I'll address that to you, Ma. Um, so the question is, should childhood trauma and other past events be discussed even when the person says he is over it? So childhood trauma and past e events, should they be discussed even if the other person says they're over it? Oh, well, in courtship, right? I believe you are talking about those yeah. in courtship. You should discuss your past. You shouldn't have secrets. That is the person you want to marry, right? And you are sure God has led you to him or her. You should discuss. When I was eight, my uncle defiled me. And as a result, this and that happened. You should talk about it. As a guy, when you were young, you had a nanny. And the nanny always molested you as a child. And discuss everything. Maybe you found yourself in a relationship before that time. And there was an issue, there was an event, a major event. You shouldn't keep it away from somebody you are going to spend the rest of your life, life with. So if you discuss that issue, you now leave it to the other person to decide, can I deal? 
So it is better you discuss so that you know where you are going. If the other person cannot deal, a broken relationship is better than a broken marriage. It is not until you now get married. I have a case. I am handing. So they are not in deeper life. You are really blessed. Yes. If I when I yes. went for the last meeting, I was like, God, I thank you for deeper life. You don't know a lot of things the MC is shielding you from. Just be following them. Don't worry. Is it the glamour? Things are getting better. Just follow them. When I was even to marry, I didn't understand those tests they asked us to go and do. It's now that I'm beginning to understand. So this case, they love themselves. In fact, I was really ill when the guy said, ah, mama, I got a wife, this and that. I said, are you sure? He said, I'm sure. This one is even enterprising. She's this, she's that. She was, the guy was, they got married, I was there. It was a beautiful wedding. Stars were there. Basket mouth, uh, Adalo, all those people. You know, it was a society wedding. Only a few months into the wedding, we started hearing stories that the lady had one disease, a deadly disease, that she did not disclose to the guy. And when the guy got to know, the guy stayed off. I'm not going face away to no sexual intercourse, married people. And it was tough. The lady was, the lady was moral, a little. She couldn't go and be having extra maritals up here. But the guy was doing it steadily outside. Anyway, the guy tried. I was like, babe, let's use protection. The girl said, no, 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 no. We are married. We have to do it. If you love me, you will do it with me. You can't die. You, you didn't have it when we go, initially got married and all that and all that. Till now, they haven't gotten over that issue. Till as we are here. So if there's something that is on a, on a medical um, angle that the church can dictate when you go for a test. But there are other issues that when you now enter the marriage and it is now disclosed, and it is a fundamental issue, it can break that marriage. It can break that marriage. So which one do you prefer? Tell him if it's okay, he will marry you. If it's not okay, you go. That is it. What, will the world end with that? No. You are not pleased. God will help you Amen. to do okay. the needful. Please. After discussing it, you can seek therapy together. These are the days of mental health. Mm. I know that has not been inculcated, but thank God, my pastor here is a psychologist. I beg you, is the man mentally okay? Is the woman mentally okay? After discussing it, go for therapy. Parting word, we thank God for what God has done today. Um, I need a volunteer. How great do you want your husband to be or your wife? A brother, a sister. How great do you want your husband to be or your wife? Oh yeah, stand up, stand up and quickly. My time is running. Very great. Now, I said that to say this. How great your spouse will be determines the magnitude of your responsibility. Yes. The greater the man, the greater your responsibility. So think about that. Then finally, um, this may sound somehow, but I'll substantiate it with the scriptures. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 13, as they fasted and ministered, the Holy Ghost said, separate me, Saul and Barnabas. Is that true? There is no leading that is as clear as that. But if you come to chapter 15, Acts of the Apostle 15 from verse 36, Paul said, let's go again and greet our brethren and see how they do. And there was contention. And the Bible said they parted asunder. That God led you does not mean your marriage can see no faith. That God led you into marriage doesn't mean your marriage can see no faith. You must work at it. You may, believe me, you may not. Marriage succeeds more on maturity than on spirituality. Thank you very much. And let me add, marriage is not for babies. You must be mentally matured. You must know how to handle issues to support it. Now my parting word. Well, while you are waiting, don't just wait. I do. Build yourself. Build yourself. Women, ladies, you are waiting for your prince charming to come pick you. 
and you are fantasizing, what value are you taking to his house? What is here? What do you have? You have gone to school. Do you have a job? Jobs are not there. Can you create a job for yourself to give you a reliable source of income? Make your money, sisters. Make your personal money. And aspire to have money. Marriage thrives well. You will pray, you will do devotion, you will serve God together. But marriage is sweeter when there is money. If there is no money, you'll be quarreling every now and then. You give it to children, you can't send them to school that you desire. Because the, the income that is coming from your husband is, you are managing. Sisters, don't do yourself. I don't know how much your, will be your husband will be earning. But no matter what, make your money. Invest. If you cannot do a 9 to 5 job because of our situation, create a job, create a business and grow that business before you enter his house. Wait, do it well. Make a brand for yourself. Are you getting me? Yes, ma'am. You must be mentally matured. Can you deal with issues that will just arise in marriage? A lot of things happen, no? Shit in marriage. And ladies who are not matured will just blow everything up. In laws issues. Oh, God will help you. Amen. So devote time to build yourself. Develop yourself. All right? If there are courses to go for, do it now. If you are still, still in school, focus, have good grades, and be fine. God will help you in Jesus' Amen. name. Lastly, there is no super Christian anywhere. There is no what? You can't even say it. Oh, no, no, I can handle it. No, 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 no. It's just a date. It's just a cinema. Just Let's go and see a movie. You can't handle anything. So put yourself in a position where temptation will be hard for you to even fall into. Put yourself in a position that it will be hard for you to fall into temptation. Are you getting me? Yes. Going to his house to cook. You are not a chef. And you are not married until you are married. God will help you. Amen. And help us. Amen. Thank, you. Thank you. Well, all that started well will end well. Amen. I want to tell you this. Don't marry a man of television. Marry a man of vision. What do I say? Don't marry a man of television. Marry a man of vision. Don't look at the Naira and the Kobo. The landed property. You know there are some women they say, the man I want to marry must have X, Y, Z. He must have a landed property. Before I say yes, the brother must show me the documents. The deed of assignment or the C of O. The certificate of occupancy of the land he has or the building he has. Don't man, marry a man of television. The man who just, you are seeing this. Marry somebody who has a vision. Does he have a plan? A template? And that's why as a woman, you need to have purpose before seeking for a partner. Mm -hmm. Why are you existing? Do you know yourself? Why do you want to marry? Do you just want to marry because your friends are married? Do you want to marry because uh, I want to become a Mrs. XYZ so that people will not say, ah, you are the only one remaining. Don't allow your, waste, your waiting period or your waiting season to become a wasted season. You have had. Develop yourself. Build up streams of income as a brother, as a sister. A sister, don't wait until you marry before you depend upon your man. And as a man, if you want your wife to call you on it, be ready to give her money. Hey. Do you understand? If you want your wife to give you, to call you honey, give her money. Do you know that this present wife are married? Ah, this woman can make you to look for multiple streams of income. I never, before this marriage, I was not a real estate consultant. I don't become real estate consultant now. Are you getting me? I now sell land. I sell house. If you, want, if you need three-bedroom bungalow, I will look for you. I do that because I want my wife to call me honey. So if you want your wife to call you honey, give her money. And you know, women, what they need, they need money. Number two, more money. Number three, much, much money. 
Number four, just keep giving her money. They need money. Sisters, don't you need money? They need people that will take care of them. And I pray that, sisters, you will not marry your enemy. You will marry your friend. The person that will pamper you, that will take care of you, not the one that will slap you, not the one that will batter you. I pray the Lord will help you. And finally, finally, listen to this. So, don't allow anybody to mash make anybody for you. Not even your spiritual fathers or mothers. There are some men and women in the church. They say, sister, the way I look at you, this is the brother that fits you well. Uh, is she God? Is he God? Don't allow any man, no matter the anointing or position in the church, to play the place of God in your life. Go to God, who has the template of your life, to give you that God-ordained partner as a brother, as a sister. If you marry who God wants you to marry, no matter what you are seeing now, your tomorrow will be better than today. Amen. You will have a, a blissful union, not a bleeding union. Amen. Thank you, and God bless you. Wow. 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 Oh, okay. So, first and foremost, thank you very much. This has been, please, a round of applause again for our panelists. It's been really practical, impactful, and we are blessed to say, to say the least, we are fully blessed and we are thankful. So, before we go, we'd like to take a picture with you and the organizing team, and then we'd like you, sir, to help us with the wrapping prayer, um, prayer. so once we're done with this session. So, um, we'd like to take a picture with Pastor and our panelists, and then the squad leaders for Across the Three Squads. Could you quickly step forward, please? Thank you. Okay, the speaker is... Oh, okay, great. Uh, do we have the panel and the picture um, photographers, please? 